Ladies and gentlemen, everyone wants to know where is the announcement for Maurizio Pochettino? What's going on? The word in the street was that our owners are in LA and there's some footage as well showcasing that they were in uh, the LA Lakers match. And apparently a meeting is meant to be held sometime tonight, USA time, and then hopefully... We hear something about it. Uh, this is the latest clip that's out there. Some of you guys might have seen this. Some of you guys might not. Uh, I just want to quickly play this to you guys. Chelsea co-owners, backed, uh, Chelsea co-owner Baghdad Iqbali, when asked about the club's next head coach, so a particular fan reached out. Let's have a look at this short clip. <laughs> <laughs> who's the next Chelsea coach? Who's the next Chelsea coach? And Baghdad Bali goes, who do you want? And I think the particular fan said, I want Lewis, but you're going for Pochettino. Uh, and then and then Bali said, maybe, maybe. <laughs> well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see exactly what happens. All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Look, I, I think Pochettino news should be imminent. There, there are some fans that are getting worried about this. Look, me, uh, who else is it going to be if it's not Pochettino? Surely it's not going to be Vincent Company or Ange Postacoglu or whoever they've got in the shortlist. I mean, there's no one that can truly compete with Pochettino at the moment. So I'm not worried about this. It has to be Pochettino. There is no way we are fumbling this. There is no way we are fumbling this. So look, I'm not too worried about this. So uh, that's my perspective on it. We want to talk about a couple of other news today. Very, very interesting uh, piece of news. One in regards to Amana Broya's injury and how he's been coping it's 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 good to have a conversation about this particular player on a serious note as to where his future lies, I suppose, for the time being. And Raheem Sterling, there's some really, really nice comments from Raheem Sterling, which I think um, is going to be very, very uh, you know, interesting once again to, to go through. First up, though, Armando Brea. I still haven't got my head fully around it, the ACL injury it does play on your mind. It was a big shock because I was always been quite a healthy lad and I've had just had a few minor injuries here and there. So you're speaking to, um, you know, Chelsea FC, the the YouTube channel, I think, or just normal interview. I'm under Brea. After surgery, I was, for, uh, I was bedridden for about two weeks. It was one of the worst times of my life. It was horrible. I couldn't get out of bed. My mom was running around the house to get me tablets and give me my food. It was a struggle. You can imagine uh, an injury of that magnitude. Mentally, it will affect a player. We've seen previously the likes of Ben Chilwell, Kalamatan Adoy, you know, Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Very, very... I'm very surprised the way Ben Chilwell has come back, flying back, the determination, because it's not really worked out for some of the players. Like Callum Tanadoy, he's never been the same player. Before the injury, that particular kid was, you know, tattered to be something special. Now he can't even get into, well, he gets into the squad, but he's never used for Bailey because sometimes he's actually not even part of the squad. So his stocks are very low, and it's it's been low since he's come back from injury. Same with Ruben Loftus Cheek; he's he's a big part player now. He's a versatile player, but he's not really found that form pre-injury when he was killing it under Maurizio Sarri. He and and Eden Hazard's connection. Oof, we've never seen that post-injury. So I'm a bit surprised the way Chilwell has come back. And I'm hoping that Amana Breyer similarly has has the same sort of impact when he comes back just like Ben Chilwell but you know it, I am a little bit skeptical because these sort of injuries can take the toll on you you almost feel uh, useless um, you want to be able to do stuff but you just can't I couldn't sleep I was in pain the day and what happened played on my mind cons constantly there you go mentally 
mentally it affects you. I was thinking about ways I could have avoided it. There you go. You know, he's picturing how could you have avoided that particular situation when he got injured. I had to take a step back from that. It was something I had to move past. Just start just focusing on getting back fit. As they say, the comeback is going to be better than the setback. So it's good to see that he's very, very uh, strong in regards to that now that he's slowly recuperating back into, into the training ground. There are some days when you come in and you feel like it's not getting any better or any worse. It's just the same. I've been miserable a bit, moody, but now I can see the journey from where I was to where I am. Fantastic. I'm kicking a ball, moving, changing direction. You have to find the balance between how much load you put on the knee and how much you take off it. So it'll be a while until I can start doing sprints, jumping, that kind of stuff. But I'm really happy with how uh, how it's going. So look, it's a brutal injury. It absolutely is. We'll get to this particular situation very soon because I want to talk about Ben Chilo so, uh, in regards to him trying to um, help out Amanda Brea. But first thing about Amanda Brea, he's slowly just returning back. Before he starts doing full training, it could be preseason. So it'll be timely to, to get back into it in preseason, new manager, new um, potentially new teammates around him as well. So we'll see how he tackles the preseason. Um, for now, it's just rehabilitation and, and continue doing that. Me personally, I don't know if he just waltz back into the Chelsea team, man. I mean, it all depends on how strong, how much of a strong preseason he can have. But I'm thinking this kid probably needs to go out on another loan and just kickstart things again. When you have a heavy injury like that, the ACL injury, it's difficult, man. You don't know. Like the stuff that Amano Brea has already said here, you're constantly thinking about that situation. Could he have avoided that? You know, there are certain days where it doesn't feel the same. You know, are you improving? Are you not improving? Um, you know, is he going to have that burst of pace that he showed before the injury? Is he going to have that uh, aggressive nature about him? Is he going to be worried going into duels? A very, very sticky situation this now, man. So for me, get your confidence away from Chelsea. You know how Chelsea fan base can be. He comes in, if he doesn't perform well, soon people are going to start talking about, ah, oh, this guy probably just, you know, the injuries probably just killed him. You know, he's past it now. I was very excited about Amanda Breyer. I could see he, he, you know, he could turn into a monster. That injury has killed him. And obviously this season has just been abysmal. I think time away from Chelsea will be, will be suited for him. I think he doesn't need that constant microscope on him he doesn't need a fan base that's going to be critical all the time um yeah i truly believe a loan deal in the next season just to get him back again will be absolutely prudent much like what ruben loftus cheek did as well you know once he came back from the injury it was too early for him to rejoin back with frank lampard um you know in that transfer ban season so he went to fulham and that particular season Probably wasn't the greatest season for Ruben Loftus-Cheek, but at least, you know, the limelight was away from him. So it's very, very important. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let me know. Would you like to see Amanda Breuer in the team next season or possibly alone? Me, I think alone is probably best way to start getting him back on track again off the back of a huge injury like that. I want to talk about this particular situation. Amanda Breuer on Ben Chilwell. He's been helping me every step. He doesn't have to, but he goes out of his way to talk to me and help me. So big thanks to him. This is what I've been saying recently. Ben Chilwell for me, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, you can just see. I'm so happy that he's been helping Amanda Breuer out during this particular scenario because he went through the same injury as well. Uh, it was it was horrific to see that against Juventus last season. And since then, Ben Chilwell has been away. And then when he came back, he copped another big injury with his hamstring being torn. And then finally now he's back in and he's starting to look like uh, that same sort of Ben Chilwell that we had pre-injury. I mean, he's not quite there, but at least the impact that he's having in the team uh, is, is clear to see that it's positive. But more than that, I've been saying recently, Ben Chilwell for me is a leader. 
We lack leaders at the moment. We lack any form of identity in our team. We don't have a character. If you've missed out on the latest live stream that I did, which talks about me reacting on the latest The Athletics article, which outlines all the issues, do check that out. Honestly, I really enjoyed doing that live stream and going through the live chat. Check that out. And I stated, you know, right now, Chelsea, you know, who are we going to build a team around next season? Who are our leaders? We need to have a spine. We don't have a spine. I would put Ben Chilwell as one of those people for next season, along with perhaps Enzo Fernandez, to build a team around. Maybe get the likes of Breeze James if he can be fit um, and if Mason Mount is still around. But definitely Ben Chilwell and, and Enzo Fernandez, a couple of players that I want them to start being the leaders of this group. And I really, really like seeing this, that Ben Chilwell has done this with Armando Breyer. So more reasons for me to believe that Ben Chilwell is definitely got leadership quality. Now, in regards to Raheem Sterling, these are some of the comments that he said recently. Whoever takes over will find an unbelievable bunch of talented players like anything wherever you go. You need a structure that we as players follow and a leader. It's simple as that. We have to buy into whoever is a manager. I've also said in the recent stream that I've watched Nemanja Vidic's video uh, in 5 with 5 with Rio Ferdinand, and it was such a good video. Do watch that as well. Highly recommend that. It's a two-part uh, show. And Vidic talks about no matter how experienced of a player you are and how much you have achieved in the game, players still want to be guided. Players still need the manager to guide them. They don't want a manager to just say, God, then express yourself and just handle the business on your own. Because the players then feel confused as to, okay, do we have a play a high line? Do we play a low block? Um, you know, do we play in the counter-attack? Do we play more? Like, they, they don't know who needs to go forward, who needs to stay back. They don't know. They want to be guided. They want the manager to stamp their authority. And when the managers don't do that, they, in fact, lose some sort of respect towards them. I think this is what Raheem Sterling is trying to say, that like anything, wherever you go, you need a structure that we as players follow and a leader. He's saying it right here. We lack structure. We lack leadership. It's as simple as that. So we buy into whoever the manager is. So whoever the next manager is, and it looks like it's going to be Maurizio Pochettino, I hope Pochettino comes in and truly guides these lot of players and doesn't look at them and think, hey, you guys are highly talented players and, uh, you know, go out there and express yourself. No, nah, set a structure, set a style, set a plan, tell them, guide them on every single detail. It's paramount, absolutely paramount. And I think this is where somewhat Graham Potter missed the trick, where he, he sort of, I don't know if he got, tried to guide every single player. Um, he sort of allowed them and the experience of some of these players to sort of, you know, guide guide us in the match. No, I, I really wanted Potter to put his authority and imprint on, on this particular team, much like how he did with Brighton. And I know it took Brighton a bit of time until we started to see Graham Potter's football. But... At Chelsea Football Club, you just you just can't be afforded to be given that much time for your football to come into fruition. You need to get it moving immediately. Uh, you know, one of the reasons. There's plenty of other reasons why, you know, Graham Potter has failed. But I believe he just simply didn't put the authority down, and I think some of the players just lost respect from that regards. We know the Chelsea fans aren't used to this, but we have to try to look at the bigger picture between now and the end of the season. Be as positive as we can. Try to finish strongly. Their support drives the players on. Look, it's very difficult for the supporters as well. When they keep copying, you know, these, these fans, when they go to the stadium and we keep copying these L's, L's after L's after L's, five L's in a row now. It's very difficult. Fans leaving the stadium. 60th minute, 70th minute. You know, this is where there has to be a give and take. You know, we as players, you know, the, the players need to need to showcase some sort of grit hanging in the game, especially the game against Arsenal. A lot of us are thinking we're going to get packed 4 5 nil. I believe so as well. But these players somehow they've got to find ways to 
hang in the game, to show that greed. And then only the fans can start, us fans can start backing you in the game. It's very difficult if we start conceding early on and, and for us to keep cheering on because it's been a tough season. It's not like it's been an okay season and this is a one-off. No, this is where the, the players, they just got to show a little bit more grit. Raheem Sterling, in the second half against Brentford, we could feel the energy transferring onto us. We want the winning feeling back in the building. We know the Chelsea fans deserve a lot better than this. Look, how we still ended up, you know, conceding against Brentford in the second half anyway. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's it's... It was a better second half against Brentford, sure. We showed a lot more urgency, but the way Frank set us up in that match, um, there wasn't going to be any goals coming. There wasn't going to be any goal, goals were coming. So, yeah, yeah, some of the blame is towards the manager as well. So players can only do that much. The manager has to provide them a particular structure, a lineup, personnel to go out there and win as well. Raheem Sterling on Arsenal clash. We have to go there and look like we believe we can win. This is a club that has had high expectations and they haven't been that way this season. Again, is another opportunity. It's nothing we are dreading. Look, I'm dreading. I'm glad that Raheem Sterling is not dreading. Look, all I can say is that it will be stupendous. It will be sensational if we can even manage a draw against Arsenal and further dent their situation in this title running um uh, you know uh position that they find themselves into if we can if we can somehow hold them even more and make it easier for man city why not crash their party more than anything i don't want to see arsenal win the win the premier league and if we can if we can somehow manage to nick a point from them i think that would be extremely extremely you know, um, wanted in the in the in the fan base by us, it'll be extremely appreciated by the Chelsea fan base, and it's something that we would love to see. If we can get a win, wow, wow! But look, I can't even think about a win. If we can get ourselves a draw, that would be massive. This is where we are. I know it's sad, sad state that we're talking like this, um, but look, an L seems to be the expectation right now. Uh, anything. Anything better than that, if we can get a draw, I think uh, the fan base is going to be delighted. Yeah, they're going to be very, very delighted. So let's see what happens. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know everything that we've talked about in this particular um, Chelsea News segment. How you feel about Amanda Breuer's future? What do you think about Raheem Sterling and the comments, you know, in regards to whoever the new manager comes in? There's got to be a sex structure. There's got to be, you know, this particular gaffer has to guide them and they need to buy into that very very important so let me know your thoughts in the comment section hope you guys have enjoyed this smash the like button if you have if you're here for the first time subscribe hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content until next time see ya